Is it possible to look like you're on steroids without ever actually taking steroids? I think it is, but a lot of people find that hard to believe. Vast majority of people are saying, there's no way this guy is natural. You just won't be able to convince me there's a single chance he achieved this naturally. So I put it to the test, and I showed this group of guys who swear they're all natural to random strangers and asked them one question. Who's natty and who's not? Him. You think he's on steroids? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, like that's just insane. It's pretty big. <laughs> it gets a little suspicious, you know? It's a little, it's a little, like, it's a little too much. I think he takes steroids. Him? Yeah. Okay, you stay forward. A hundred percent, I would say natural. No, they've yeah. just been getting roasted the whole time. So yeah, so sorry about that. To, yeah. yeah. Based on their answers, I was able to pinpoint exactly which body features people look at when they're suspecting steroids. And in this video, I'll show you how to build up those features 100% naturally. By the end, you'll know exactly how to look enhanced without ever touching a needle. As for our eight test subjects, I totally understand the skepticism when you just look at them, especially a few in particular. That's why I'm secretly bringing in a medical doctor who's gonna blood test every single person later in the video. And I'll say this, there's definitely one curveball in those testosterone results. First, let's break down what people think a natural physique actually looks like. On the right is the definitely natty zone. Basically, everyone I interviewed thought this look was achievable naturally with some basic training. A few people pointed to subject number five's quads as being a little suspicious, but I got in a leg workout with him and I definitely think he earned those quads naturally. On the left side is the questionable zone. Most people thought these guys were probably taking something. Even after I told them they swear they're 100% natty, some people still had their doubts. So what if I told you all of these people are actually natural? That's crazy. Oh. I'm gonna start working out too. Do you believe me? It gets a little suspicious, you know? It's a little, it's a little, like, it's a little too much. I'd, I'd have to say no. Yeah? I'd have okay, to say fair. no. Fair, legit. Are you in my YouTube comments? Out of curiosity, I asked people where they'd insert me into the lineup, and some of their answers were a little surprising. At the end. Uh... At the end? <laughs> I gotta put you at two. I gotta put you at two. Right here? Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Not here? Yeah, I can put you at one. You I can put you at one. Yeah, I can put you at one. <laughs> but if you cancel out the person who put me in the most jack spot, definitely a fan, and my biggest hater of all time, Madeline, who put me in the least jack spot, on average, most people put me in the middle, right between the definitely natty zone and the questionable zone. Several people pointed to my shoulders as my enhanced feature. And in my experience, that usually is the first thing that people look for when they're judging whether or not someone's enhanced. Anytime I'm accused of taking steroids, I always hear that my delts look just a little too 3D. And while I owe a lot of my deltoid development to solid science-based training principles, I probably owe more of it to my mom. Like, just look at her shoulders right now at 60 years old, lifetime natty. But if you're chasing that naturally enhanced look, building a wide set of delts is absolutely crucial. And the real key is the side delts. I do lateral raises at least twice a week, but when I was early on in my bodybuilding journey, there were actually periods where I do lateral raises at the end of every workout. So if you're struggling to grow them, try training them more often, even three to five times a week. After 3D delts, the second naturally enhanced feature that people pointed to was actually the biceps. I was a little surprised at this, but almost every single person pointed out the biceps on the four guys in the questionable zone. Like the arms are literally as big as my leg. That's like, I don't know. Turns out that if you're trying to impress everyday folks, having some big peaked biceps might just be the easiest way to do it. Subject number four drew a lot of attention for his biceps peaks, so I wanted to see if he had any secret sauce for building those insane 18 inch arms. Literally 18 right on the money. Yeah, so I was a competitive gymnast. It's up until I was like 14. I got this one photo, I pulled this off my mom's Facebook. You can even see the like delt development. What are you, how old are you there? Uh, maybe like 12. Tolgi explained to me that he does a lot of preacher curls with forced reps at the end. So once he can't get the weight up on his own, he uses his other hand for assistance and then takes the full weight on the negative. Even though my biceps aren't really a strong point for me, I did manage to grow them over the last year, according to ultrasound measurements, and I owe a lot of those gains to this exercise right here, Bayesian curls. Oh, like here. in that position, right? Yeah, I keep it locked. And it's just curling up like this. And so you can really emphasize the length and position. After biceps, the next thing that stood out as an enhanced feature was actually the upper pecs. A few people pointed this out on subject number two as his main wow factor, and I'll take a little credit for that. I actually coached Shamar to the all-time Canadian bench press record for his weight class in drug-tested powerlifting. 
Even though some of the science-based community prefers machines over the bench press, I strongly believe it's one of the best exercises for building a big sculpted chest. I think, man, it's, I really don't think it's a coincidence, bro. Like, yeah, it's not. Everyone I see who has a big bench has a big chest. Has a big chest as, to, to, as well, right? Now, when it comes to the upper pecs in particular, it is pretty clear that an incline bench will grow that area a bit better. So for the best total pec development, make sure you include some kind of incline press or incline fly as well. After the pecs, a lot of people pointed out that everyone in the questionable zone had bigger traps than everyone else. And science does suggest that having massive traps can be an indicator that you're on some special supplements. That's because your upper traps have a higher androgen receptor density than most other muscles. Basically, there are just more testosterone receptors on the muscle cells there. So when you inject testosterone, it tends to have a bigger impact on the traps since there are more receptors to bind to. I never had the best traps personally, but I did manage to bring them up the best my genetics would allow. Obviously, shrugs are a staple, but a good tip is to use a slightly wider grip and think about shrugging up and in. That way, you'll hit the upper trap fibers along their fiber orientation much better. The upper trap fibers actually run a lot more horizontally than many people realize. I also think including some kind of overhead raise is a good idea for the upper traps. So that could be a full ROM lateral raise or an overhead loo raise on the cables. And even though it's fallen out of fashion a bit lately, I still do think direct neck training can make a big difference here too. But above all that, in my personal opinion, this next thing is the biggest factor that's actually fully within your control. And it's simply being lean. Assuming you have some muscle base, when you're leaner, you're going to look much more jacked. As a comparison, this is what I looked like 30 pounds heavier at around 20% body fat. And this is what I look like now, 30 pounds lighter at around 10% body fat. I'm definitely getting more steroid accusations now, despite the fact that I'm actually quite a bit smaller. That's the illusion of bodybuilding. I think a big part of creating that like enhanced look is just getting leaner. Yeah, for sure, 100%, especially when you're natty. If you get leaner and like you get on camera under some decent lighting, yeah, you look like crazy. you're gonna look yeah. way bigger. It's just the way That's it is. True. You're actually smaller, but you look bigger. When you're leaner, you'll also be more vascular, which is actually not nearly as related to steroids as many people think. Phil Heath is arguably the best, you could make the case he's the best bodybuilder ever, the most yeah. gifted anyway, and he just wasn't a vascular guy. Neither was Jay Cutler. It, you'll get notice. more roid accusations if you are vascular, People for some reason yeah. think it's related. It's mostly just genetic, yeah. honestly. It's mostly ge genetic and low body fat. Someone like Hussein gets a lot of fake natty accusations online since he has a huge social media following. And yeah, he has a super impressive physique, even in real life, so I get it. But just like me and pretty much every other fitness influencer, he does understand the power of lighting, posing, and the illusion of bodybuilding. Most people don't realize just how much of a difference lighting can make and how enhanced you look, especially when you're lean like Hussein. Actually, while shooting this video, I played with two different lighting options. This is what everyone looked like with standard diffuse lighting. Now look at the difference once we switched to more spot lighting. Everyone went from natty to enhanced in a one second transformation. Here's another visual. This is what I look like just standing in my kitchen under normal lighting with no posing and being filmed on an iPhone. All I did was run downstairs to my posing room, flicked on a spotlight, hit a most muscular pose, and switched to a Sony a7S III camera. That's a big visual difference with less than one minute between shots. I'm only 155 pounds right now, and when you look at me posing on my own, I think I do look massive, but when you put me into the lineup of other guys that are bigger than me, I think it adds a lot of context. Now, right before I show you everyone's blood work, let's talk about Julian. This guy's caught the internet by storm, with the majority of people saying there's simply no way he's natural, especially when you consider he just turned 19 years old. Is anybody else like my age here? How old are you? Yeah. 19. You're 19? Okay, yeah, he's here. Right, is he 19? Yeah. <laughs> I've been training for almost as long as he's been alive. I'm gonna max this thing out for him. He doesn't even know where to fit them. Yeah, we're starting to run out of room, but... Yeah, what's another 10? 360. Let's go... We might as well go 365. You think you'll get it? I don't know. Yeah. I'll just load it as much as I could. <laughs> All right. Tell me on one, two, three, okay? Right. Three, two, one, up. Here we go. Woo wee! That's how she's seen. Yo! <laughs> Let's get five or six. Four. Let's go, Julian. Push it. <sighs> six. Let's get eight. Come on, come on. Seven. Okay, this is Let's go 12, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Go heavier, stop. Uh, okay. That's too light for you. And you don't do weighted pull-up? Uh, I do, I just you do, do three okay. plates. Though. You do three plates? <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. It's just 
depressing. I don't know, I should be like, I should be motivated or <laughs> just sad. <laughs> but here's the thing. Before you jump to any conclusions, just take a look at this photo. This is Melvin Wells, and this photo was taken in 1949. The first corroborated reports of testosterone use in the lifting community were in 1952. So there's an extremely high likelihood those arms are 100% natty. But if you're really tapped in, you may know that Soviet lifters did use testosterone in the late 1940s, so maybe this guy somehow got his hands on it. One person who definitely didn't get his hands on steroids though was this gentleman. And we know that because this photo was taken in 1912, two decades before injectable testosterone was ever even isolated for the first time. Not gonna lie, those bicep peaks do look a bit familiar. Here's the thing, some people are just jacked. Just like there's a huge range in height potential, there's also a huge range in muscle growth potential. If we see someone who's seven feet tall, we don't immediately think they're taking growth hormone. But when it comes to muscle mass, people often forget the role of genetics and immediately jump to steroids. Now, I don't wanna undercut any of Julian's hard work and chalk it all up to genetics. The dude trains like an absolute beast. But I do think his answer to this question was revealing. What do you eat? What do you have for breakfast? I do eat a lot of like protein and stuff like that. Like, same thing everybody else eats. Like, I go to Wendy's sometimes, you know what I mean? Nothing crazy. Here's what I think. Sometimes, when you combine world class genetics with super hard training, you really can get to a level of muscular development that some people simply aren't gonna believe is possible naturally, no matter what you say. I'm in the gym all the time. That's like, because somebody's like basically saying, nah, you didn't put in the work, you just stuck a needle in your arm. But right. I'm like, afraid of needles i hate needles like so much see that's how you know he's not enhanced because he said you put it in your arm and you like you don't inject in your you don't. arm ah. so are you are you, are you planning to stay natural or have you thought about that as of right now i'm just focused on you know getting through school yeah and i'm also like a big family dude so i start a family and stuff okay and awesome. once everything's kind of you know set in stone and have everything laid out then i'll be like all right cool let's shoot for olympia you know what I mean? for real let's shoot for real holy Okay. And despite that sounding authentic, I still want a little more confirmation. So while they get their blood drawn, I'll tell you what I'm looking for in someone who's natural. Most healthy young men will have testosterone levels between around 200 and 850 nanograms per deciliter. If you're over a thousand, that's a bit suspicious. Over 1200 is very suspicious and over 1500 is basically impossible without steroid use. Pro bodybuilders will sometimes go well above 5,000. I've even heard of people going above 10,000, especially if they're not taking other drugs to suppress their levels. All right, now with that in mind, let's take a look at the blood results. Now, for the sake of full transparency, I have to say there actually was one person who went above the normal range for testosterone. This is the bar graph of everyone's levels, and they range from 415 to 689, except for one person who hit 928. Who do you think it was? It was actually subject number six, Spencer. Everyone else was in the 400s to 600s, but Spencer's levels were substantially higher than everyone else's. So does that mean he's the fake natty? Well, to check and see, I went ahead and got his luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels measured as well, since those hormones tend to drop very low with steroid use. So if Spencer has high testosterone combined with low LH and low FSH, that would make me do a double take. And as it turns out, his LH and FSH levels were totally normal, right in the middle of the reference range. In fact, the LH and FSH levels were all normal for everyone. And to be clear, I definitely do think Spencer is natty. A 928 testosterone level is a bit high, but it's nothing really out of the ordinary for an active young male in their late teens. But more interestingly, and contrary to popular belief, more testosterone didn't correlate with more muscle, at least not within the natural range. And research actually supports this. Studies show that as long as you're within the normal healthy range, testosterone doesn't do nearly as much for muscle growth as people seem to think. It isn't until you start injecting testosterone and you get to those super physiological levels that it really packs on the size. Now, of course, it's always possible that someone could have used something in the past, but I think the most plausible scientific explanation is that when you combine years of really hard training with dedicated nutrition and the right parents, the results can be super impressive. If you wanna maximize your own natural potential, you need to dial in your nutrition. 
I honestly think just getting your body fat down is probably the number one thing you can do to look as jacked as you possibly can naturally. I'm using Macro Factor to run my own cut this summer. And honestly, the app makes the whole process super easy and kind of fun. Tracking your macros is like playing a game to hit your targets each day. We have a super fast barcode scanner, and we recently rolled out a new AI photo feature where you just take a picture of your meal and the app will estimate the macros. If I'm having a snack like a protein bar, blueberries, and some mixed nuts, I can just snap a pic of the meal and it'll pull everything up at once. It even captures trickier meals with many ingredients shockingly well. And honestly, if you do that in real time with whatever you've got in front of you, it's gonna be a lot faster than manually searching for every individual item. And if the numbers ever seem a little off, you can always manually adjust the amounts after. I use this new tool all the time. It just got everything that's on it. And honestly, I think this is completely accurate. The app will take all the guesswork out of dieting for you. It uses science-based algorithms to coach you to your goal based on your unique metabolism. All you need to do is take five or 10 minutes a day to log your body weight and what you eat. We've got more than 300,000 active users and our community has shown off some of the best transformations I've ever seen. So if you'd like to get started, just download Macro Factor on the App Store or Google Play, input code Jeff, and you'll get two weeks for free. Thanks for watching guys. See you all here in the next one.